So let us now do some Death Road to Canada for a couple hours. See if we can make it over the border once again. I'm kind of surprised that I actually got got there on the second try. I mean, I almost completely fucked up at the final hurdle because I killed every single person before we got to the final screen. Oh, that's allowed. That's allowed. There we go. Good thing I can dial that volume at whim now because I couldn't do that before. Let me just adjust that, fine tune a little bit. Right, here we go. So I should probably use those Zombo points before we actually start. Perks and traits, more info. Death Road Femur. Okay then. The last body builder. It looks like it's lost in thought. You can't rely on guns to survive. The only guns you can re truly rely on are these guns. TLB flexes big time. 11 Zombo points. Femur is the name of the update. Oh, okay. Is this meant to be Dog Brown? It kind of looks like it just a little bit. I'm developing an amazing new product, I call them Unlocks, or Unks for short. Witness the magic of Chibos. Wait, I mean Unlocks. The debut... debut... The what? Debutante... Yeah, Debutante is holding for a tiny t... A I can't, I can't fucking speak. The debutante is holding a tiny teacup running around filling and has no more grace to it. She should be, you should use intelligence and decorum. She crushes the teacup into a fine dust. Is there any recommendations that I should be buying here? Debutante, thanks. When Horde Swoman, you need a good weapon near and lots of ammo. Rambo's is haiku. Is there anything else here or is it just that building? Also, why is there a flashing Canadian maple leaf at the top corner of the screen? What does that indicate? Unless you really prefer specifics, I'd recommend the unks. Right, okay then. Let me just bring up the chat in a different window so I can see it better. Buy all the unks, so because they progressively get better. Right, okay then. Superhuman sleeping needs very little sleep, never gets tired. Okay then. Blessed with an interesting life, much greater chance of finding weird building, weird, weird building or character in city looting events. Oh, okay, I didn't read that right. Normal chance ten percent with trait fifty percent. That's a big jump. Doubles the chance to find rare traitor camps. Sure, that'll do it for now. How do we get back to the game? Oh, we just leave the place. Okay then. Alright, so... You told me I had to try a different mode. What was it? Was it this mode? Rare characters mode? Short trip to heck mode? Familiar characters mode? We, yeah, we did familiar characters. We beat that once. Do 
deadlier, deadlier roads, it bars off most of the game modes, so you'll want to beat it as soon as possible. Right, so I should do this then. 30% more danger, 30% more excitement, about 30% more zombies, bandits are more cruel. Uh, how much more cruel? 30%? I'm gonna say 30%. So unfortunately we can't use our custom characters during this, but we'll, ju we'll just see how this goes. Or, actually hang on a minute, did we... Could you pick your characters or are we just stuck with randos? I may have to restart this because I didn't pick custom characters there, unless it is just randos. I'm not sure how this works. Just confirm to me whether or not I messed up there, or if it is supposed to be like this. You have to load them in. We got somebody called Garfield. I haven't added any more characters since the last time I played this, by the way. You know what, we're just going to restart that. Yeah, that didn't load the character there, whoops. I'm gonna try someone else that's not Mel. Let's see, who did we not have before? I think we got almost everybody, but we... I don't think we got AVGN, actually. In fact, AVGN... And... Where is he? AVGN and his buddy Nostalgia Critic. There we go. AVGN hears rumours that Canada is a safe place, free of the threat of zombies. With nothing to gain from the waiting around Florida, he decides to brave, brave Death Road and travel north. More people means more fighters, it also means more food consumption. Yeah, the only reason I made Homestar Runner was because when I was making other characters, I noticed the t-shirt was... Like, one of the t-shirts you could select was a red t-shirt with a white star. And I was like, that looks like Homestar Runner's t-shirt. And then I just ho so happened to notice that one of the faces had that fucking massive underbite, and I was like, okay, we're making Homestar Runner with this shit. Unfortunately, you can't get a fucking bootleg wrestling, wrestling, uh, bootleg wrestling mask. Otherwise, I would have made Strong Bad as well. Right, okay. To start the journey, the group decides to grab some supplies from a nearby location. In order to survive the death road, you'll need to hoard as many supplies as you can. You will need to find ways around and train and grow your team. Quiet factory. The group finds a rundown factory, like most factories one would see nowadays. Sometimes people try to set up in a safe hideout in the factory side closet, but this is usually doesn't end well. This is usually this usually doesn't end well. Right now, I need to remember how the controls work in this game. Oh, wait a minute. Right, there we go. For a second there I thought I was giving them the umbrella. I accidentally like took it away. Yeah, so I haven't really been adding characters. I need to start adding some more soon. Stabbing with the fucking screwdriver, sure.
some foods. Oh, there's something there as well. There we go, gun for Nostalgia Critic, because why not? Just be careful not to say a back credit card to him or he'll go apeshit. Never leave home without it. Some oil. Gas canister. Or cast canister, as I said the last time I played this. The one time I was trying to say it wrong on purpose and I actually said it right, go figure. Yeah. Shit. Let me read the chat real quick. I think I'm on my fourth page of characters now. Yeah, I'm still like one and a half pages in. Let's see. Kinda curious how hard it would be to make a bootleg Duke Nukem. I want to name him Ash Kickum. Ash Kickum. I have Duke in my game. He's not perfect, but he's close. See, I was talking to Tev about this the last time I was like setting up characters for this. Um, the power of suggestion really helps when it comes to creating characters because like, for the, for example, I was trying to create Kid Icarus and it was really hard to make him look like Kid Icarus. But when you put the name Kid Icarus next to him, you're like, oh yeah, that does kind of look like Kid Icarus. Right, okay, old campgrounds. The group finds an abandoned campground with a fire pit. Nostalgia Critic even finds an old, somewhat extra stale large pack of marshmallows. The group sets up in camp, they eat a huge bag of marshmallows instead of eating dinner. There's even some left over. A deer has stopped in the middle of the road that stares at the car. <laughs> this seems very in character, Nostalgia Critic tries to shoot it. Nostalgia Critic takes a shot at the deer from one of the car windows. He completely whiffs it. Shooting revealed. Not very good. I mean, if you look at him fucking trying to shoot his gun on the show, he just, like, fucking aims everywhere but straight. Also, hi, John Plays Mobile. Welcome to the stream. The group drives into the city as it starts to get dark. They try not to lose track of time. Things can get bad after the sun sets. Let's go to the convenience mart. How many wins do you have? I've only done two runs so far and I won one of them. Barely. So this is my third run. What's that? A broom? No thanks. Is it just me, or are the events in this game the best thing ever? There's nothing more hilarious than going to an anime trader and watching the irritating character go, anime isn't real. <laughs> well, you got five wins, that's cool. Yeah, I've not put much time into this, I've only like did one session of it last week. So this is like my second session. Except that zombie didn't give a shit. Is that just a f 
skull head? Oh, it's a zombo point, right, okay. I thought it was like a sentient skull head, it was just like a collectible. Oh right, those are, those are, yeah, those are propane tanks. Don't want to fucking attack those like the last fucking time. That said... <laughs> we didn't see it, but he went kaboom. Ugh. God damn it. Ah, shit. I pressed the wrong button there. There we go. Just wanted to see that go kaboom. But yeah, this is a cool game to chill to. I like this. I've been quite enjoying like my streaming with it so far. Even though I've only streamed it once, but it was like a, a nearly three hour session of the game. I don't think there's any more stores here. No, it's just like the edge of the screen. Yeah, I was hoping there'd be like a, a Walmart or something, like a bit like Walmart instead of like a tiny convenience store. A cast of Ganister. There we go. I said it. Yeah, I'm going to head back to the car now. Yo, Mark, that's what it's called. I knew it was like a, um, I knew it was like a play on words of Walmart, but I couldn't remember what it was called. So it's Yo, Mart. Group camps for the night off a quiet stretch of road. The group eats a decent meal. In the morning, there's a moose outside the camp. It looks injured and it looks it's like glaring at the group. Even injured, a moose is really powerful creature. Probably not best not to mess with it. I don't think AVGN is really good at treating things, much less himself. And he's not very good at aiming straight, so... I'm gonna try something really fucking bizarre and hope that we get something cool out of it and not kill ourselves. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. AVGN wrestles the moose. Arms lock with hooves and a test of strength and willpower. He does not win. In a blatant disregard for wrestling rules, the moose crushes him with its hooves. His morale has decreased, but he's also fucking dead. Also, it turns out he had no strength. I don't know, you'd think, you'd think fucking James would be... Like, considering what he's done on the show, you'd think he'd be decent at fighting things. Like, he's kicked Bugs Bunny into a fucking stack of boxes, for crying out loud. Nostalgia Critic finds a gun range. It's empty and mostly picked clean of supplies. However, he finds some shooting targets and a working pistol. Train shooting. Okay. Shooting ability has increased. 
but it's just him for now. We need to find another person. Outside of Canada, most of society and civilization has been destroyed. You can still find people engaging in trades with preserved food as a new currency. Oh yeah, this is the trader thing. Good food. I can already hear James screaming ass as he dies. I really should put that on the soundboard, actually. Yes! How about those zombies? What a pain in my rights. The suspicious person is wearing a mask holding a fancy silent sniper rifle. Silence pistol for three. Nah, we got a gun on. Firearms coach, the rifle-wielding woman, claims she used to train others in the competitive shooting. She is selling tips for keeping your aim steady and multiple target trick shots. Zombies are slow-moving targets. It's real easy. You have 18 foot left. Shooting ability has increased. Again. He finds a woman... He finds a woman surrounded, surrounded by medical equipment. She claims to be a skilled doctor. Six for treatment? Nah. I think we're good. Not a whole lot else I could do here, so I'm just going to leave. The Star Trek Critic finds a new person, Ludwig. He is alone and wants to join the team. Sure. The Star Trek Critic accepts Ludwig into the team. Onward to Canada. The group gets confused when driving through a forest. They stop at the cabin to figure out where they are, but get trapped by a roaming horde. Siege alerts. What does Ludwig have? Sledgehammer. You can also have a crowbar and the meat cleaver. I keep forgetting which button um, attacks, like for a brief moment. When I'm not doing this for like five minutes, I forget how everything works. That's why I broke that um, flashlight, because I forgot which button was in attack. Shit. Yeah, screw that other room. Right, we need to get some more gas. We're running low. The car looks like it's about to break down anyway. Can't stop thinking about how about, about Mondays and how I hate them. The group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. Would you want to improve? Morale and one health healed. My weapons are a lot cleaner than they should be. The group is sitting around the campfire, finding this camp camp I can't fucking speak. This campsite was rough, so they are in a bad mood. The group eats a decent meal. Plan out tomorrow. Ludwig plan plans out the next day. It's a good use of time and helps them focus on the big picture. Morale increases. What's revealed? Good. Zombies in the city have stirred. They're already aggressive as the group arrives. I don't think I've been to the, the safe house yet. Let's try that. 
What is that he's holding? Is that a zombie arm? A zombie leg? Don't think he needs that. You can carry those two weapons. What have I got? In fact, you know what? I'm going to take that meat cleaver off you. How many weapons are you holding? Right, okay. Uh, and you can have the screwdriver as well. Oh yeah, I think I mentioned yesterday was like a community day for Pokemon Go. Caught a bunch of Charmanders, got like six shiny Charmanders and I got... I evolved three of them into Charizards. It was fun. But there was just one thing about yesterday that kind of bothered me, and I didn't realise this until today. It turns out that the weather in Scotland was so nice that I actually got sunburned on the back of the neck. So yeah, that kind of sucked. It's one of those things where I didn't even realise it till I saw it in the mirror and I was like, oh. You know, you know how when you cut yourself and you don't feel it, but as soon as you see that cut, you start to feel the pain? It's kind of like that. It doesn't hurt that bad, it's just like a big red mark behind my neck, it'll be fine. Just put some, like, cream on it, it'll be okay. It doesn't hurt super bad. It's just like a, a mild, like, it's just a, a very, very mild stinging sensation, that's all it is. That was the only downside because I kind of underestimated just how nice the weather was in Scotland because it very rarely gets this nice, especially at this time of year. Usually if you want like super nice weather, it'd be like in August and even then it's like very rare that it gets that warm. Kitchen knife. There's some foods. But yeah, other than that, it was fun. Oh yeah, you can close doors behind you, can't you? Yeah, I forgot about that. Speaking of zombie survival games, State of Decay 2 has released on Xbox One, which I wasn't going to buy anyway, but it turns out you can get that game on the Xbox Game Pass, which I do have, so I might end up downloading that and checking that out. I've never played the first State of Decay, but apparently it was a decent game. The second game is exclusive to Xbox, So it kind of makes sense for them to put it on the Game Pass as something they would advertise as like a get for the console that's not on PlayStation and you can get it through that service if you don't want to buy it. It's not even a super expensive game, I think it's like $30. Which is cheaper than Sea of Thieves, which is full 60 I'm gonna take this axe instead. I really need to find some gas, I'm running low on fuel.
Oh shit. Oh fuck. Well, rest in peace, Ludwig. Uh, yeah, the zombies are about 30% more aggressive. This might not end well. Yeah, I'm leaving. Things are getting a little bit too heady. Well, that didn't end too well, did it? And we're about to run out of gas. Yep. This is probably where I'm going to end up dying now. Nostalgia Critic. Nostalgia Critic spots a car speeding down the road. Maybe the stranger can help them. Without slowing down, the driver yells out, NERDS! You know, that would have been perfect if it was AVGN and we could have pretended Nostalgia Critic was in that car. And then the car is gone. Nostalgia Critic's morale decreases. Okay then. NERDS! Or you could think of that Simpsons joke where it's like, NERDS! Like where Homer's just shouting at the, the fucking a university kid that just walks by. Right, Nostalgia Critic's attempts at camping has been interrupted by a very angry bear. He is forced to abandon the camp with little sleep and he must make a panic decision about what to grab fast. Get all the food, get all the ammo, grab extra weapons, fight the deadly bear. I'm gonna grab all the foods. That's the thing I've got the most. Nostalgia Critic manages to grab all the food before fleeing. Being alone, he isn't able to grab anything besides his own weapons. Morale has decreased again, god damn it. Things are starting to go downhill. Without a car, Nostalgia Critic is a sitting duck for bandits. Nostalgia Critic is ambushed by awkward bandits that apologise for the robbery. Oh yeah, I remember this. This might end up this might end differently. They demand eight food to pass safely. How much food are we holding? Seventeen. I'm going to try Oh wait, we can't apologize. Uh, God damn it, I'm gonna pay the foods. Morale decreases again. We, we just fucking dropped three morality points in the space of a minute. Nostalgia Critic finds a wrong, a long road full of abandoned cars and zombies that may be used to them. There must be a lot of gas still in the tanks and there must be a car that still runs. Yep, this is not looking too good. No. Just got to be careful. Yeah, RNG can be pretty cruel. The last time I played this, I had really fucking good RNG for that one run. Let me just try to draw them away from that car. There we go. The way ahead has a big tree lying across it. it, looks like someone cut it down to block the road. It would take a group of strong people to move it safely. I've got a feeling that if I try to lift the tree I'm going to fucking die from a hernia or something, so... Let's try to take a detour. 
Nostalgia critic decides to take a detour. This is usually a bad idea. It takes some extra time, gas, but not too much. Didn't want to try ramming it in case it broke down the fucking car. Nostalgia critic finds an empty spot along the road that looks good for camping as any. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Nostalgia critic spots an old boot on, boot on the road. Boots on the ground, boots on the ground. Black Ops 4 boots on the ground. Nostalgia critic spots an old boot on the road. It doesn't look like it's anyone else's side, but hey, it's free. This is surely a symbol of good luck. There's no reason not to pick that up. While walking through the woods, Nostalgia Critic doesn't pay attention to where he is going and falls into a deep puddle of water. His gear is fully submerged, putting supplies in danger. Aw, oh, goddammit. Nostalgia Critic is hiking down a gravel road when he sees a group of wrecked cars ahead. Chances are there's gasoline in some cars and one may still work. Well, we're doing this again. So much for that boot helping giving me good luck. Wait, why the fuck did I drop that? I'm not sure, but you... Hang on a minute. I'm not sure if you're aware, but look at the toilets. Yeah, I've always done that. You only get like one fuel tank, which is not a lot. Like one unit of fuel tank. Uh, this is not too good. Uh. That's good enough. Back on the road again. As Nostalgia Critic explores a campsite, he is ambushed by bandits. They brandish makeshift weapons, they demand all of your weapons. This is ludicrous, but not even bandits will usually do this as a slow but sure death sentence. Nostalgia Critic tells the bandits to cool it. Right, I'm going to take a gamble. Nostalgia Critic tells the bandits to cool it. The bandits all start attacking Nostalgia Critic. They forget about the weapons. Damn it, he's almost dead. While driving on the death road, Nostalgia Critic decides to take a stop for supplies. What, so he's both taking the chance saying pull it or what? Hopefully I can find some food in here. Or... Yeah, food as well, but... Just some other stuff that I need to pick up. Like gas and whatnot, but food also... Can help. But yeah, there's, there's gas in here. Uh, too much shit going on. No. Yeah, I may have to wait for more of them to come in before I can go through that door. 
if you're super lucky you'll find a useful genie that spawns there. Yeah, I've not seen that yet. I've only seen like um, one unit of gas appearing from toilets. A leaf floor. <laughs> oh, it uses up your gas. Right, okay. Can't rely too heavily on that then, but that would be a good way to get out of a tight spot. Nah. Nothing up there. Oh, oh, nope. Right, I'm gonna head back to the car. Got quite a few... Got quite a good amount of fuel for the car. How many days left till we get to Canada? 11 days. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make it at this rate. And the Star Critic comes across a house by the road. It's locked. While trying to smash the door down, a voice calls out. Leave my door alone, you dinks! Try to recruit the Star Critic, I'm not a dink, or he says, cool it. Try to recruit. Fine, whatever. The door opens and Richmond comes out. Richmond joins the team. Okay, cool. Attitude and wits are very bad. The campground that the group smells up. It smells up. The, the setup it smells terrible. The the source of the smell is complete mystery. Endure the smell. Uh, I don't think either of them can heal each other, that sucks. The group runs into a very out of place vending machine. It looks like someone made it from chunks of scrap iron. Its lights are still on. Everything in the machine costs 20 bucks and the group has about that much wrinkled and frayed bills. Leave it alone, shotgun fun pack, bag of chips or a stick. Who should feed the mostly rotted dollar bills into the machine? Warning, this will be a very annoying process. Nostalgia Critic. Nostalgia Critic. It takes forever to feed in the dollar bills. The vending machine keeps spitting them out. His morale decreases to the lowest possible level. A fully loaded shotgun pops out of the vending machine. Gets six shells with shotgun. Cool. Or get shotgun shells, rather. Nostalgia Critic demands that Richmond leaves. Nostalgia Critic says that he will take the car and supplies and continue on to Canada. Wait, what? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Say it, don't spray it. Richmond tells Nostalgia Critic to say it, don't spray it. Nostalgia Critic gets so angry that he can't. He gets so angry about this that he can't even talk, and so can I. Neither can I. See what I mean? Richmond's morale increases. While driving on Death Road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. What weapons are you holding? Ooh. Otaku Katana. Yeah, try saying that three times fast. Oh, no, 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 no. God. 
Fucking damn it. You dicks. I don't have any other weapons, so... I guess I'll just throw the fucking flag at him then. Well, that went well. I don't even have any fucking bullets for this gun. I need to find the weapon fast. Oh no! Not good. Very not good. Ah, fuck. Well, that sucks. Did I get nothing from that then? Was that just a waste of time? Right, Moo and Homestar Runner. You recommend a character who can provide guns too late. At least we get to start by going to Yolmart. It's a good starting spot. Can't think of a whole lot to say right now while I'm doing this. Nope. I mean, it's gas and no, all, but yeah, not really a whole lot of stuff I can get there most of the time. Oh, there we go. More gas. Like, actual significant amount of gas. See, I kind of wonder... I love that Homestar Runner has a fucking tennis racket. But yeah, I do wonder if there's anything inside those boxes. There might be. Okay, I guess not. That's a decent hole. I think I'm fine with that. It's better to not see anything than to point out you've got nothing to say. Because it calls attention to the fact you've got nothing to say when people might have not noticed. Me, me saying that I've got like me saying that you are saying that I've got nothing to say doesn't doesn't fucking help, I guess. And me saying that me saying that you're saying that I'm saying that me saying that you're saying that I'm saying. I wasn't paying attention to what that what what, what just happened there. Morale increased for some reason. I mean, that's fine, I guess. I just didn't really read what just happened there. In fact, hang on. 
I could always check the clip to see what just happened. Ugh. Mini golf. The group sets out up camp in the safest place they could find, an abandoned mini golf park. They eat a decent meal in the morning, they find the golf ball and putter while searching the area. The group decides to play a quick game. Moo needs get some much needed exercise. So is that Yeah, morality increases for both. Right, okay. So that's what happens. You didn't know you could clip stuff in this game? Yeah, it is that the last time it does work. Annoyingly you cannot clip high warriors for some reason. Because I did try that also, and that game's like published by Nintendo, so you'd think it would be natively supported, but it's not. Maybe in a future patch it will. Right, the group siphons gas from some abandoned vehicles and then spots a magazine in one of the cars. It's an issue of Peppered Peppers, the special edition in mint condition. Uh, I'll let Moo read it. It was hypothetical at the time Zombie Eclipse. Apocalypse Special Edition, Moose studies the firearm tips, emergency machine article, and the unusual but effective common repair tri tri uh, tricks, not trips. Shooting, medical, mechanical increases, and get 59 gas. Nice. Look how much gas we've got. Lots and lots and lots of it. Pharmacy. Since, hang on, before we do this, I'm going to play something for you. Just a second. As soon as this loads, hang on a second. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find something, but I don't think it's on YouTube, so never mind. It was it was just a joke I was going to show you guys, but I'll, I'll look for it later. It's nothing important. If I recall, Fire Emblem Warriors has the same issue. You know, at some point when I've watched enough One Piece, I will probably end up buying that One Piece Pirate Warriors game that came out on Switch recently. Hopefully by the tip by that time it will go down in price a little bit, like maybe like six months down the line or something. Cause I don't think I'm gonna be caught up with that show anytime soon. Like that show's got like how many episodes it got? It's like eight hundred plus at this point. Also I don't I don't have any weapons. I think I just broke that golf club. Or whatever I was holding. Did you hear that statement Koi made about other Warriors games they wanted to make? Uh, no. What, what did they say? They said they wanted to make a Star Wars Warriors. A Star Warriors. Alright, if they're going to make a fucking Star Wars themed Warriors game, they have to call it that. They have to call it Star Warriors.
They also mentioned they wanted to make a Mario Warriors. Not sure how you could do that, actually. I, th I think the Warriors series is a little too violent for Mario. Like, the closest you can get to Mario being extremely violent is, like, Mario with a laser gun in Mario and Rabbids, and that's, like, more of a cartoony thing. Like, didn't, didn't, fuck, who, who's the company called Next Level Games? I think they were working on a sports game, like, wrestling or something. For the game, it was the GameCube or Wii. And apparently it was like, in, it was like the pitching, the, it was like they pitched it to Nintendo. They showed them like some of the the animations and stuff and they're like, nah, this this looks too violent for the Mario characters. We cannot, we can't, we don't want you to do this. So, yeah. Sorry, we're not going to fund this. Like, there's an animation that shows, like, Lu I think it's Waluigi doing, like, a, a fucking pile drive to one of the other characters. It looks amazing. But yeah, it was, like, it was pitched to Nintendo. It didn't fucking get beyond the conception phase. Because Nintendo said no. I think it was Next Level Games. I don't remember who it was exactly that pitched it to Nintendo. But I think it was, like, the same people who worked on the Mario Striker series that came up with the idea. If anyone has a gif of that Waluigi pile driving thing, please link it to me in the discords or telegram or whatever, because I really want to see that. I'll show it, on, I'll show it in the stream as well. You have Mario punching the shit out of Peach and Smash. Yeah, that's kind of different though. That's cartoon violence. Group sets up camp late on a nearby highway in a bunch of abandoned cars. They're broken, but many should have a little bit of gas. Uh, Moose seems to be good at siphoning gas, so we'll send him out. Decre morale decreases, but we get 61 more gas. We're we've got a shit ton of gas, well over 200 at this point. Choose your fate. The group sets a gets a peaceful moment to rest in a safe house with no zombies in sight. With some spare time, they could exercise. Mu can teach mechanic skills, or Mu teach medical skills. I think medical would be more important. Right, okay then. I'm going to look up that. Hang on, I'm going to look up this, uh... Just a moment. I'm going to look up this thing that I was describing earlier. There has to be a gif of it. Right, I think I found it. Let me get let me save this real quick so I can put it on OBS. There's a couple here, actually. In fact, no, I think it's just the one. There might be something else, but here... Just a second. Let me... Locate this image real quick. Okay, so here's the thing that I was describing earlier. Now check this out. So this was something that I believe Next Level Games pitched to Nintendo for like a wrestling game in the style of Super Strikers. And Nintendo looked at this and they were like, you know what, this is way too violent for Mario characters. Even like you can't they didn't even want to classify it as cartoon violence, so they were like, yeah, no. No thanks. I don't remember what they said exactly, but I think they said something about that it conflicted with a code of honor or something like that. I might be paraphrasing. But it was something along those lines. In fact, hang on, this is from the Unseen64 article. 
let me check that page real quick. And I can give you the information from there. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, this isn't Unseen64. It's a GIF website. It says Unseen64 in the title, though, so I thought it was like the Unseen64 website, but it's not. You could probably look it up yourself and you can find it. In fact, hang on a minute. Let me look this up. Mario Wrestling Uns Unseen 64. But yeah, Next Level Games made the Super Strikers games, didn't they? The Mario Strikers Charged or whatever. Okay, so the game is called Super Mario Spikers. It was developed for the Wii, and it was like a volleyball mixed with wrestling. So it was like a mashup of two different sports. So it was mainly volleyball, but they also like threw each other about and did like really fucking badass moves and shit. There's a video for it as well. Like, there's quite a few things here. But yeah, that's the, the gist of it. It's really fucking weird that shit like that could have been, but Nintendo turned it down. Right, outside of Canada, most societies and civilizations have been destroyed. You can still find people engaging in trade. Oh yeah, it's the trading camp. I love that I read that and I don't realise until like they say trading and I'm like, oh wait, this is the trading text. Get out of our house! Gonna fucking ransack your house, thanks. I'll take that. What's Mosu? M Mosu, what's that? It's an old but fit man in matching grey sweatpants and sweatshirt. He screams something about building mass and bulk and intense strength routine. How many bugs do we have? Nine? Nah. Moo uses charm. Nice. Wait, what? Hang on a second. Moose strength increases from really bad to really bad. What the fuck? Muso is the Japanese title for warriors. Oh, okay. Kirby Muso. I guess that I guess Kirby would be more likely because of the, like the variety of weapons. But then you'd have to start thinking how it would work with other characters. Like Kirby would be easy. But I don't know how you would get like DDD to have like a huge variety of attacks and shit. I mean if you had like the mass DDD form I guess it could work. See Nintendo, like the Nintendo's fine with like violent things, they just don't like doing it with Mario that much I've noticed. Nah. I'm not gonna bother buying anything. Leave. What about you? What have you got? Two Molotovs for five? Nah. Not only when we've got so little food to spread across both of us. But yeah, the Warriors thing seems to work best with Zelda. The group finds a new person, Hayes. He is alone and wants to join the team. Is he using an Oculus Rift? Or a VR, whatever you call those things? 
one of the, one of them VR devices that I've heard so much about. He claims to be re really strong, but he flexes and runs hard. Beats of sweat forming on foreheads. Sure. He joins the team on to Canada. City is covered with hordes of undead. Right, okay. So this is a siege, isn't it? Oh, so where the fuck are we? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell if the zombies are standing or lying down when it's just silhouettes and nothing more. Oh, shotgun. Don't mind if I do. So I've got a shotgun, meat cleaver, and a piece of wood. Actually, hang on. Can we replace that piece of wood with something better? It's sort of like a siege, you just make it to the end of the map but F from surviving. Right, okay then. Nope. Oh. There we go. Don't need to get any fuel, we've got a shit ton of it. <laughs> Can any human truly be too small? And then Moose says, what are you talking about? And that alone fucking makes his morality decrease. Good. The group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. Uh, pick one to increase. Plus one to max health. As far as more realistic Warriors games go, I think F-Zero Warriors could work. We've barely ever seen F-Zero... Like, an F-Zero game that has, like, stuff going on outside of racing. Except for, like, that one anime, but I've never seen that. So I'm not, I'm not sure how they could work, work that into a video game exactly. I mean, they could do it. I just think we're more likely to get a real F-Zero game as opposed to an F-Zero Warriors. Engine's almost broken. There are bios on most of the characters. Hang on a minute. Oh yeah, Moo's afraid of chickens. Homestar Runner doesn't hold eye contact. You'd think Hayes would not hold eye contact because he's got a fucking Oculus on his head. Hayes has a beautiful singing voice, somehow. Right, at the end of the day, the group hides in a drafty old house. Some zombies roam around outside and the doors of the house are barely on their hinges. 
who should barricade the house, move Homestar or Hayes, or stay on watch all night. Homestar Runner. Homestar Runner barricades the flimsy house. He nails some planks onto the door, but they keep falling off. Mechanics revealed. Shit. Everyone is hurt. Fuck. Well, that's not good. Oh, right. I was trying to give that to him, but you need to put it in there first. Then you can give it to him. Every time I get into a, an action scene, I always press the wrong button. I always press the weapon swap button because I think that's the attack button. So, after much deliberating with myself, I think I've decided on my next video essay, which I might start working on soon. I was going to work on it a while back, but then other things happened and I kind of um, forgot about it. But since E3 is just around the corner, I want to make a video... I don't want to do like an E3 predictions video. Like, here are the top 10 things I want to see at E3. Number one! No, I want it to be more like why I think Super Mario Maker 2 is quite a likely thing to happen at E3. That game in particular seems to be, like, the safest, like, new game you could guess for the Switch. So I want to do a video like that, talk about why it's most likely and what they could do to improve upon the original, because there's so much they could do with a, a second iteration of that game. So yeah, that's going to be my next video. I might start work working on the script tomorrow. I mean, I've got like, what, three and a half weeks before E3, so I've still got time yet. I would love to see another Mario Maker. I don't want, I don't want it to die on Wii U. See, here's the thing. It's too good of an idea for Nintendo not to do more with it. It seems wasted potential if they just leave it on the Wii U. And I don't think... I think it's way too good of an idea of them to even just port it over to the Switch. I seriously think they are working on a new one. Besides, it's already been ported to the 3D, 3DS, so it would be kind of redundant if they were to port it for a second time. So instead just make a brand new game and address all the issues with the first game and add even more on top of that. Maybe put a Mario 2 theme in there and add some like Mario 2 stuff. I don't know if anyone here has played Super Mario Bros. 3 on Game Boy Advance. Like Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario Advance 4. But in that game you've got the e-reader e levels, you can get them on the Virtual Console as well, but the e-reader levels often mix in stuff from different Mario games, including Mario 2, so it's not outside the realm of possibility that you could make a traditional Mario level but have like the, the turnips you can pull out of the grounds, or have like those um, shy guys you can pick up and toss around, like they could easily do shit like that and it would still work. It's just a matter of if they want to go the, the extra mile to add that shit in, but I think, I think they could do that. 
Well, they're at to add all the Mario 2 bosses, so it's not just Bowser and Bowser Jr. Like, you have Claw Grip, have Mouser, have King Wart. Imagine having a fucking room with, like, three King Warts that you have to defeat to get to the next room. Like, that'd be fucking neat. Or King Wart and Bowser in the same room together at long last. Like, there's so fucking much they could do with a sequel to Mario Maker. This is just like scraping the surface of what is what is the potential of that franchise. Oh, there's one more door. Nope, nothing in here. Oh yeah, Birdo as well. Can't forget Birdo. I guess this isn't really considered spoiler since I'm not actually spoiling the game, technically speaking, but if anyone remembers Mario and Luigi Dream Team, am I the only one who is so disappointed at the missed opportunity that the final boss could have been King Wart, given that the game's whole theme is like Luigi constantly dreaming in this dream world? Like they could have easily made like they could have easily have King Wart come back like have a great comeback and be like yep I'm the one pulling the strings in this dream world not Bowser this is my domain bitch we need King Wart to come back in the Mario game it's been way too long like even if you count Link's Awakening which was like the last real time you get to see King Wart I know he's not called King Wart, but it's practically the same character. It really fucking is something they should be bringing. Like, you get- you still have, like, all the other Mario 2 characters, or most of them, in modern games. You got Birdo, you got Shy Guy. But you, you never fucking see King Wart for some reason, they just didn't want to bring him back for one reason or another. Right, okay, abandoned gun range. Search for ammo, train group haphazardly, carefully train one person. Let's do that one. Since I've got a shotgun. Okay. I'm going to hold on to that shotgun if I get, in case I get cornered. Just taking a quick drink in between driving segments. Right, the group finds an empty spot along the road. Oh, that looks good for camping as any. Okay. I have a habit of reading virtually everything even if it's just like common flavour text. The group is about to break into a small fortified grocery store but then finds Ara living inside. She seems like a cam cover person. Ask her to join. Ask her to go away, or let's rob this dingus. Nah, I'm gonna try recruiting her. Sure, I'll join. I was running out of food anyway. Era is now part of the team. And she's brought some food supplies. Bonus! Composure is really good, and wits are really good. Attitude is pretty poor, and loyalty is good. Not too bad. Most of my characters have fucking god awful stats for everything, so at least hers are not like super bad. During a moment's peace, a gnome shows up and starts shrieking. I'm. I'm. K K Konomi? Nomi? I'm Nomi the Challenge Conduct Gnome. It gives you the choice of an extra challenge in exchange for a fabulous reward. No thanks, no melee attacks, no shooting, max morale penalty. Uh No thanks. Oh, the challenges sound awful. The gnome shrieks, whatever nerds, and then waddles away in a huff. The group is relieved that that is all over. Morale increases. Why did the game's volume suddenly increase? Hang on a minute. I don't know if that was the capture card or if that was the game itself. 
That was bizarre. Just gonna turn that down on the on OBS. While driving on Death Road, the group decides to take a stop for supplies. I'm gonna be stopping playing this shortly because I think Vinny will be doing his Sunday night stream shortly. But we'll we'll play this for like a, another 10, 15 minutes, I guess, and then I'm gonna stop. I'll just save. Uh, Tev, are you still there? Quick question: Where do you save without losing progress? Is it during the the car segments or during the fighting segments? Trying to figure out what I should be doing. In fact, let me check my equipment and stuff. Yeah, we need more food. Let's go to the grocery store. What is she carrying? A frying pan? Okay. Blue hole's gonna sue. Oh, he doesn't have anything. So for people who haven't been super observant, also Homestar's piece, uh, piece of wood broke already. But yeah, for people who haven't been super observant, every time I step out of that car, I switch weapons because I keep thinking that's the weapons button and it's not. Wow, there's a lot of enemies in here. This might end really badly. <sighs> Home star runner. Ah. Uh, okay, it wasn't him that died, but he's almost dead. Oh fuck! Did Ara die? Yep. Well, that went fucking pear-shaped real fast. Looks like I'll be wrapping up the stream sooner than I thought. You always have to rub it in your face as well by having them just eat the corpse that's sitting there. It's not worth dying over food. Yeah, a little bit too late to tell me that. Keep in mind I've not played that much of this game anyway, so I'm bound to make mistakes. Look at how many they're sitting there. So fucking many. Yeah, I'm leaving. Hopefully I can find a new recruit on the next part of the roads. If we don't die here. But Come on. Oh, come on. Jesus Christ, that's the fucking longest I've seen that stall. Long as I seen prior to that was like maybe 13. That was like double. The car has broken down. You don't say. Punch the car. Nope.
home star runs into a particularly rough rough Ray runs into a particularly rough stretch of road. There's nothing life threatening about it, but it's just a long and miserable walk. He gets bruised and battered in multiple small accidents. Morale decreased, he's also hurt. Yep. This is how it fucking goes. It goes so well and it just goes real shit real fast. Finds a nice spot to camp for the night in the woods. Wind and rain move in during the night, catching Homestar Runner by surprise. It's a miserable night with no car to retreat to. Homestar rolls up his sleeves and starts tending to his wounds. He tries to help, but lacks enough medical supplies to do so. Yep. Homestar walks to the entrance of a dark tunnel filled with cars. There seems to be some gas in the working car there. Also lots of zombies that you can't escape from easily. This is probably where I'm going to die. Is there any bullets in here? Yeah, there is. Just in case. I mean, I've got nothing to lose at this point except Homestar himself. Nah, I'm not going to go for that. Don't want to be too greedy. I'll get this one, though. No. Oh, that one didn't take long at all. Like, three. Usually it takes about somewhere between five and ten to start up. Homestar Runner finds a large campsite that is occupied by a few carloaders of other survivors. Camping with strangers is risky, but there is nowhere else to go. None are heading to Canada. Camp with them. Homestar Runner takes a risk and goes to sleep with a crowded camp. One of the other guys, one of the other groups, learns about the trip to Canada. They give some supplies because they say you'll need it more than they will. It's not too bad. Oh nice, we've got medical supplies as well. Sweet. Ten driving days left. There might still be hope yet. Homestar Runner finds a used car lot that seems to be untouched by time, or at least not touched by looters. Finds a supply of gasoline and a few working cars. I'm just going to keep the car I've got right now. I've got a feeling that the cars there might not even work that well. While driving on the death road, Homestar decides to make a stop for supplies. Um, What do we need? More medical supplies, really. Possibly the gym apartment would have it. Homestar drives near a rather large apartment building. I'm going to make this the last segment and then we'll save. It drives near a large apartment building and it may take a while to explore, but they may have an indoor pool. I'm going to have to be careful and not to die. Did that again? I do that every time. Ah, no, no, why? Fuck me. I, I didn't mean, I was trying to shut the door from the other side there and by going back and forth I fucked that up completely, but whatever. It wasn't going well anyway. So fucking salty that it ended like that, but I'm... Pretty, pretty much done for the night. I mean, I've been streaming for how long now? Feels like four hours? Yeah, coming up four hours. So I'm going to stop there for tonight. Yeah, the 
Whatever that mode is called is definitely harder. 30% harder apparently. So I'll give it another try in the coming week. I'll try doing it more often than I did the last time because the last session was like a week ago. So maybe in the next few days I'll give it another crack. 